your body is the perfect ascension vehicle for you. In fact, your body is where ascension happens. Ascension is a process of undergoing a metamorphosis at the physical level. Lately in my comment section, I've had so many people ask me this question about ascension. And they're saying, Kerry, you know, you talk about ascension as if it's not the end. Right? Like you're talking about ascension as if we're going to survive it, as if it's not death. I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if there's a teacher out there teaching this or teachers out there teaching this. I don't listen to other people's stuff. I don't read other people's books. I only ever have connected with my own internal barometer, my own internal truth. And I've very been very clear about that, that I've never wanted to water that down and connect with other people's teachings. So my own personal experience, which I'm going to share with you today about Ascension, is that it's a very physical process. It happens inside the body. I know, I know. You guys are going to ask me how I know this, so I will talk about that. I'm going to talk about the body. I'm going to talk about the mind. I'm going to talk about the prison of the false matrix, but really important, I'm going to talk about what ascension feels like at the physical level, at the very physical level. What is your body going to go through? Because Ascension is not something that the mind can control, but we act as if it is. We act as if there's a checklist, you know, in a child healing, check, uh, shadow work, check, forgive everyone, check, daily mantras, boom, you know, self-care routine, boom, taking my vitamins, <laughs> green smoothies, like what are we doing? We're trying to operate ascension with the same parameters that we used to run life by in the false matrix, which was... A mental prison, that's the definition of the false matrix. It is a prison of the mind where we are encapsulated into a mental realm. And in that mental realm, now all realms are, exist uh, as one wholeness because we're multidimensional. So all realms are almost like Russian stacking dolls where they're kind of not just delineated in this, you know, perfect one doll around another doll around another doll. They're more like merged and flowing into each other so there's multiple frequencies multiple layers but we're not inhibited or limited to being only in one realm it's a very unnatural state of being but that's where we were in the prison of the mind in the prison of the false matrix so we're operating our understanding of spirituality not just ascension by the old rules that do not apply so i hear people when i talk about ascension and i talk about your body being the perfect vehicle for ascension i hear people say oh carrie that's really sweet oh sweet that's lovely but my body is too dot 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 too arthritic too old too paralyzed too blind too there's too many ailments ascension is the process of return exiting the mental prison and returning to that full multi-dimensional experience where all realms are available and when all realms become available yes the mental realm exists but so does the emotional the physical the spiritual and then each of those realms is multi-layered that's the russian stacking dolls multi-layered in terms of various bandwidths various frequencies various experiences of all of those realms there is no limitation there is no dissecting there is no separation unless you're in a very unnatural world which is where we've lived we've made the unnatural normal we've made the abnormal normal and we've gone so far as to call that the real world the mind that operated our lives that our entire identity is held by your identity think about this is held inside the brain so in other words, your brain tells you who you are. You don't experience who you are. In the mental realm, you think yourself into being. And that's why thoughts are so pervasive in the false matrix and why we find it very difficult to be free from thoughts. There are a lot of people who are very shut down and some people who are very shut down don't have access to those thoughts because instead what happens is they start to hear the shutdown and they start to just hang out in a very limbo-like, numbed-out state. So there's two experiences of the false matrix. The one is a crazy chatterbox brain, which is where most people are, and the other is a deep disconnect. Neither of those are healthy. Both of those are just two extremes of 
the same place where we exist however in our truth once we have ascended and we regain connection to the body what we're going to find is that we can start listening to the body consciousness we can start identifying what this other self is because what the body is is the vehicle through which the higher self is then expressed it's the vehicle through which the true self gets to anchor itself into a physical form that's what the body is it becomes a conduit that allows the authentic truth of who you are in in the false matrix that's unavailable that true self we can have experiences of connecting like you can have a meditation you can connect to 5d at the consciousness level and these are very important experiences a very important training ground we should do this so you can go to my online shop there's heaps of guided meditations and any one of those are going to lead you into 5d but it's at the level of consciousness then you're going to bring that consciousness into the physical body more and more and more and each time you do that each time you bring that 5d or i shouldn't even say 5d i should rather say the multi-dimensional because it's not limited to 5d right the multi-dimensional self you bring that into the physical self that's how you begin to unplug more consciously from the false matrix and you're only going to realize it was a prison of the mind when you get out of the prison of the mind while you're in the prison of the mind you're going to go i'm not imprisoned I'm not even in the mind because it's going to seem so normal to you. That's just part of the conditioning. As you begin to integrate and absorb higher frequency, higher consciousness into the body and of course bring it in to embodiment, the body's going to start healing and start looking very, very different. So ascension is in the beginning at the physical level, very gradual. You're gradually moving into the physical body of 5d which is why some people experience things like mm, their skin perhaps looks smoother or younger or they feel more vital in a certain area or some people have said to me i don't know what, what happened i didn't try i don't know what happened i'm just healing old ailments the stepping into the gradual stepping into the 5d body is underway now but it happens in totality at a global event which we call ascension which is the great signal from the sun that is the micronova the solar flash that's the moment where the sun's ejector is spewed out not just towards planet earth but the entire solar system and even the surrounding galactic plane everything gets a taste of the sun's light as the stargate that is our sun bursts its banks and opens its frequency and delivers its light into the realm that we live in that is what dissolves the final layers of the false matrix the body that you're in right now correlates to the mental prison is answerable to the mental prison which is where everything is disassociated disconnected fragmented shut down the mind is the ruler of the false matrix so the you that lives in the false matrix is operated by a part of you called the ego which lives in the brain i've always said the seat of the ego is in the mind the seat of the soul is in the body but nonetheless the mind is tyrannical and it's controlling and it's judgmental and it's inflexible and it's jaded and it's cynical and it's all of those things that are very rigid it's not wrong by the way i'm not saying to you that the mental realm is wrong and bad i'm simply saying to you it's a very unnatural state of being to exist only in that one realm and then to imagine that that one realm is life is the totality of life where we don't have access to the fullness of who we are so the body that we step into at ascension because that's really what happens it's the renewal of the body when that transpires you're going to step into the you that you would look like if you were somewhere between the age of 29 and 32 if you had not eaten toxic food oh i'm just looking up and there's an eagle how beautiful is that not eaten toxic foods you had not breathed in polluted air you didn't have any microplastics in your body your food you didn't have any forever chemicals hanging around in you or your environment the you that was not tainted or traumatized even so a more pristine more whole more healed version of you that version of you is so whole and so healed that it emanates a light it radiates a light we see these 
old Christian art um, depictions of people with auras, these beautiful shining lights from their head, that aura, so to speak, is the crown chakra in its natural state. We naturally, when we're in 5D, the body naturally emanates the most spectacular godly glow, the most spectacular light, because that's naturally who we are. I've often said we are angelic type beings. And what I mean by that is, if we were to look at 5D beings right now, we would say these are angels, or these are highly evolved, beautiful, enlightened beings. These are gods. And we would really just be looking at ourselves, and that would be the truth of who we are. You're in the perfect ascension vehicle. You're learning right now to connect to the body consciousness and there's a reason why we're blocked and inhibited and finding it very difficult to do this even though we can right now. So the, the false matrix is disintegrating and it's crumbling and as that happens we can begin to access the multidimensionality. We can begin to bring the higher consciousness into the body but there's a reason why we don't and why we're prevented and that is... The first layer that we connect with when we connect with the body. So here you are making peace with the body or wanting to, right? Stepping out of judgment of the body and telling the body, you're not going to make ascension because you're too something. Dot, 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 whatever it is for you. The body holds the wounded inner child. Now you've got the tyrannical mind who's used to running the show, calling the shots, dictating what you feel, what you think, how you process everything. Looking at the unhealed trauma of childhood, which is as you connect with the body, it's almost like the first layer because it's on the surface, ready and waiting to be discharged. As you connect with that wounded child, the emotional experience of the wounded child is the very first layer of connection to the body. Boom, you're out because that's scary. That's out of control. Remember what the brain is. The brain is the part of you that wants the illusion of control. Now it's going to feel very out of control as you connect with things that you can't name, feelings that are so uncomfortable but familiar because it was your childhood after all, but all of that unresolved stuff, there it is sitting inside of you as the first meeting, greeting, connection point with the body. There are so many people doing inner child healing and healing in general there at the mental realm. And then they say things to me like, Carrie, nothing ever heals. It just comes back again and again and again. And I say to them, that's because most of the time, the healing that we thought that we were doing, we were doing from within the false matrix, which meant that we were healing from the brain, which meant that we weren't healing at all. Because the brain cannot heal the emotions, which is the part of you that actually experienced and still holds the wounds of the false matrix. But now it's all unaddressed and suppressed. So it sits in the subconscious. It comes up every now and then, perhaps in dreams, because that's what the subconscious will do. It'll try to communicate in dreams. And it will also create, a lot of people don't recognize and realize this, reality creation very big part of what creates your reality is your subconscious mind. <laughs> the unconscious also creates. It's not, we, we're acting as if we create reality with our words. We're acting as if, if I say, I'm happy and whole, I'm happy and content, I love my brand new car, whatever it is. We act as if that's where reality is created. No. Actually, in the false matrix, to a degree, yes. But that's not where we live anymore. We're being shoved out of the false matrix, out of the mental prison. Those old rules don't apply. The old ways of creating reality don't apply. The old ways of understanding life and spirituality don't apply. The old way of healing doesn't apply. You're eventually going to reach a point where you go, this just doesn't work. And you're going to want to throw in the towel and think spirituality is a crock of hoo-ha. It's not. It's simply that we were running the whole damn thing from the wrong vantage point being the mental prison and you know that was okay that was just part of the experience so doing something wrong becomes a learning curve that's why we must do things wrong we must get things wrong now what we're doing is we're shifting into the acknowledgement that the feeling level the experiential level is 
actually the cutting edge of reality creation and your consciousness is wanting to funnel into the body. That's where you can access the depth of who you are, the truth of who you are, your gifts that come online, your wisdom that comes online, comes online through the body. If you were not alive, you wouldn't need to access the higher self through the body. If you were not alive, ascension wouldn't even be a thing because if you were not alive, to shift into a 5D body is a very easy transition. It's very, very easy. What we're doing is we're trying to work through the physical form that's been a prisoner of the false matrix that has all of this encoding held inside of it that is so limiting and inhibiting. As we come into correct now, and we come in to feel and experience life in the body, through the body. First layer, wounds. First layer, wounded inner child. But that layer is thin. It's like a little crust. It's like a little thin crust. But most people get so scared by that that they don't go through that thin crust, that first experience of connecting to the organic self, the real self, the true self, who belongs to the organic matrix, in other words, to God's world. The organic universe is God's world. And you connect to it through the body. This body of yours is ready and equipped to perform a miracle. Your brain cannot do ascension. Your brain is not the part of you that can ascend. Your brain doesn't know how. It's never going to have the blueprint, the technical skill, the know-how to metamorphosize and alchemize the 3D expression into the 5D expression. Ascension is not death, it's life. It's life within life. In 2016, I was given an amazing experience of feeling ascension. So you could look at it as an almost like a practice round of ascension, but it was much more than that. It was me going into the future to experience ascension. At the end of that process, I was given a choice and the choice was, okay, you know, you've done this now. Now you've ascended into a 5D body and it's going to be really difficult to regress. It's going to be really difficult because you now know the ease and the peace and the love and the harmony. You now know what it is to be in a healed body. To not have resistance, to not have judgment. You now know what all of that feels like. Now you're going to go back into a 3D body. It's pretty rough. And because of that, I was given a choice. And the choice was you could leave now if you wanted to, which would have looked like death to my family. And I wasn't prepared to put my children through that. So I said, hell to the no. I'm coming back to walk the ascension journey with my children and with humanity. Because it would be amazing, wouldn't it? If we had... At least one among us, maybe more, I don't know, who can share with you guys and say, okay, I remember Ascension, this is what happened. So that you realize it's not only safe, it's natural. This is exactly what my body's designed to do. I don't want you to fight against your body, push against your body, demand that your body be anywhere else than where it is. Feel anything else other than what it feels. We're so used to, in the old mindset, pushing things away. That's what we thought healing was. We thought healing was the process of getting rid of the pain, getting rid of the past, getting rid of trauma, getting rid of. It's not. It's the process of bringing it closer, bringing it in and alchemizing it through the body into light. So no wonder we didn't do a great job of healing. No wonder we've got all the unresolved stuff. No wonder as we touch into the actual connection with the body, we run away because that's where all of that stored stuff is being held. As you connect to the body, make peace with it. It's going to become very energized. You're going to start feeling electromagnetic currents, frequencies flowing through you. Once a month in the Plasma Light Tribe, that's my online community, which is called the Plasma Light Tribe, because we're learning to activate the Plasma Light body. That's what the sun does, by the way. The sun ejects plasma at us. And when it ejects plasma at us, the plasma light body, that activates. And that's what happened at the ascension point. So the ascension that I walked through and that I remembered, 
was exactly that. I've got to put, I've got to close my eyes. I've got to put my eyes down and, and really go inside to reconjure that memory for you so that I can share it fresh with you. Because every time I do this, it's like I'm going through it again. It's like I'm remembering fresh. And it was the most surreal, most beautiful experience of feeling the body in peace. The sun's light came in. The sun's light came in and as it did, there was the most surreal feeling imaginable in the surrealness of it all. And this incredible light in the sky, like when I say in the sky, I, I mean right here in the air around us. So imagine Aurora Borealis, but imagine this incredible Aurora Borealis right here in the air around you. Everything looked so exquisite. And as that great solar flash from the sun came, the body's plasma light body began to activate and radiate an energy field of protection, almost like a force field, almost like a bubble around the body. And the bubble was huge, absolutely humongous. And inside that light, which I suppose you could think of as like a cocoon almost, inside of it was everybody that I loved. My family was inside, my dogs were inside, my husband was inside. My loved ones who had crossed over, they were inside of that bubble. So if you have loved ones from this lifetime that have crossed over, it's highly likely. There's no, there's no absolutes, you guys. There's no, this is what happens to everyone who's crossed over. And this is what happens to everyone who has this ailment. Everyone who has this. We, we like to work in kind of blanket statements, but there really are none because there's individual choice that determines how things go for us and what we do. But the vast majority of beings who have passed away in your lifetime that you have a loving bond with, they're going to be there inside that bubble with you. Ascension is like a, it's a family event, right? So it's your loved ones and it's the loved ones that didn't incarnate with you. And the remembrance is huge. As you see their faces, these are the galactic beings. You might think of them as angelic beings, but these are galactic and cosmic beings that populate this exquisite cocoon space with you. And you lie down. And as you lie down, it feels like your body's being operated on or being rebooted, rewired. It feels like your body is coming back to life again. And it does. That's what happens at ascension inside the body. The body is learning to correlate to, correspond to the organic universe. So we're practicing, 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 practicing until that ascension points, kind of like a whole lot of dress rehearsals. We're getting really good at this. We are refining the body's ability. Because people ask me this, they say, well, if we're going to ascend anyway, right? Well, the vast majority of people will likely ascend. So people say to me, if we're going to ascend anyway, then what's the point of doing healing work now? Like, what's the point of being in a weekly group like I have? I have my Plasma Light Tribe. We meet once a week. People say, what's the point? Because we don't need to do all this healing work if what I'm saying is true. We don't need to do all the healing work from the mind. But we do need to do the dress rehearsals. Practice immersing yourself in 5D at the body level, at the physical level, bringing it literally home into the body, bringing the body back online again, realizing that healing is not about pushing anything away, but about alchemizing all that is unresolved, all that is fragmented, all that is painful into light. It's a process of alchemy. It's a process of transformation. So the illness that you have or the stiffness in your joints, or the mental illness, or whatever, whatever the ailment is, that gets alchemized into the higher expression of you. So I look at my body and I go, wow. It makes me emotional. Because I, I've seen both, right? I've seen the body that I look at when I look at the mirror today, and I remember the body that I looked at at the ascension point. And I go, wow, now I get it. Now I get why all of those 
painful experiences were there and all of those ailments were there because in the healing of those exact experiences, those exact set of circumstances, those exact illnesses, those exact everything that needed to be healed, it produced the most harmonious version of self because all of those unhealed states are springboards. I always talk about how your pain is a springboard into your healing. And it is almost if you were to imagine the opposite of the pain that you've experienced, what would that be? What would that be like? What would the opposite of the health concerns or the mental illness or the limitations, what would the opposite feel like? That's what you experience as you start entering into 5D. That process where you're in healing, and by the way, I'm not describing a med bed. Please don't, don't, because I heard people quote me and go, oh, Kerry says we're all going to go into med beds when we ascend. No, guys, definitely not. We're lying down, but it's not on a med bed. You're lying down in the presence of your own higher consciousness. <laughs> your higher consciousness is the med bed. Your higher consciousness is the cocoon. Bringing that, Ability online now is the most important thing that you can do because then it also means you don't have to wait till the ascension point to step into all of that healedness and just carry all of the pain with you until that point that would be awful and traumatic and many people will do it many people have chosen to do it that way but you don't have to in increments healing is more possible now than ever before in increments you're stepping into that 5d vehicle your body <sighs> the body that existed in the false matrix its own god spark was locked away from itself i know this is going to sound complex to some of you it's really not the body that you were in in the false matrix had a God spark. And what that means is the body that you were in in the false matrix had a supreme intelligence, the intelligence that is the infinite self. That was there but dormant, there but inaccessible. That's the best word I can give you, inaccessible in the false matrix. So there's a video that I put up a long time ago. Uh, the video was called Your Body is a Technology That You Do Not Own. And I was alluding to that in that video, alluding to the fact that the body's supreme consciousness was inaccessible. But as we ascend, the supreme consciousness of the body becomes accessible again. And I share this with you because I want you to know that the brain that's been operating your life, that's been holding your identity in the false matrix, it has a ceiling because it all it has to go on is intellect. That's what your brain has. That's the currency of the mind. The body has got capacity for infinite wisdom. Please let that sink in. Please take that in. The brain has a ceiling in terms of this is, this is how far my intellect can take me. This is how much my intellect can know. And honestly, you guys, the intellect that we're capable of is nothing, is minuscule in comparison to the wisdom that becomes available to you at the ascension point, the wisdom that gets switched on, the love light that gets switched on, that is intertwined with, interwoven into the fabric of the universe, that in that ascended body of yours, you will feel no difference between your own consciousness and the universe's consciousness. You will feel that there is a bridge between you and the universe and you can travel that bridge at any time and bring all of that wisdom right into the body without even trying. It's just an automatic process. The body's capacity to hold pure wisdom, unlimited, infinite, multidimensional wisdom is un limited and ascension is now giving you access to that again making all of that available to you again never diminish your body and say my body's too whatever too decrepit in order to ascend my body's not going to make it your body is designed to ascend in exactly the state that it's in right now your body is designed to regenerate because that's what happens at ascension it completely 
regenerates. Children are there, animals are there, families there, loved ones are there, you're there, you're all as a unit going to be aware of multiple other cocoons all around the planet doing exactly the same thing as a unit ascending. The interesting thing is each person is ascending inside their own self. It's not like somebody's doing it with you. You're, it's a very, very personal process, but you have the comfort of knowing that your loved ones are undergoing exactly the same process as you are literally in the same room as you. Please make peace with the body. Don't use the brain to fight against the body, to judge the body, to diminish the body. Step into a reverence and a respect with the body and begin to just imagine, just entertain the possibility of what healedness looks like, feels like for you. When you lie down on that ascension bed, so to speak, it could be a few seconds and it could be a few thousand years. You just don't know because time stops. You now step into infinite time. And all of the healing that ever needed to take place takes place in what you may think of as the blink of an eye, but could very well be thousands of years. It, it, it doesn't matter in that healing chamber, so to speak. You step out and then you step out onto the planet that's been revitalized. It's not just the individual bodies that have undergone the regeneration process. It's the entire planet that has been resuscitated, regenerated, and opened up to us again. I'm going to talk a bit more about that maybe in the next video. I'll see how it goes. It's a very, very deep conversation to have about the actual organic nature of the actual organic planet and the actual orga organic body of yours that's going to navigate this new space, this new realm that we're stepping into from my heart all the way into yours. So much love, everyone. Tell me in the comments below, where are you at with your body? What do you need to learn? What do you need to know still about your body? And of course, come join the Plasma Light Tribe. If you feel ready to get activated at a very deep level, that's where you go. Head to my website, kerryk.com, and I will see you there. Lots of love, everyone.